Gary Berman. We're coming to you live from the NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association. We're here at their convention in Dallas, Texas, and we're listening and learning from the smartest people in the world uh, pertaining to a very interesting and almost unique uh, segment of the telecommunications ecosystem. So we have today two wonderful guests. Hi, welcome. Hi. Hi, Gary. Good so, to see you. So tell us um, a little bit about uh, yourself and your origin story and, and uh, the cool stuff you're doing here at the conference. Well, I'm Carrie Bennett. I'm a partner with the law firm of Wampelbahn Dickinson, and we're here at the Cybersecurity Summit to work with the telcos and broadband companies in the rural sector to get them protected, um, risk mitigated, um, and um, onboarded with cybersecurity um, threat detections and insurance and legal actions that they can take to protect themselves long term from cybersecurity threats. Yeah, and you know, one of the interesting things about your organization is, you know, you have you cover this extraordinarily large piece of America's, you know, territory, uh, but a very small number of people proportionally, you know, the density of uh, the, the customers that you serve. Uh, tell our audience a little bit about that. What are the challenges associated with cybersecurity in, you know, uh, in your industry, your segments? I think the biggest challenge is the cost and you know, the fear of like spending the money um, when you have all these other things that you're trying to provide service to your customers with and relying on universal service support because there's not enough money to um, serve the customers just based on what the customers are paying you. So that has to be subsidized in some way and you're trying to get good service out, but you have this threat of you know, cyber ransomware or really you know, other threats from cybersecurity malfeasers um, and then trying to incorporate that into your budget while you're still trying to do the good service that you're, that you're trying to provide to the customer. So since there's not enough customers out there to support the network and you're already kind of cash strapped, um, trying to come up with that extra money to do the protection side of, of the house, which is where Peter and his company comes in. You want to talk about yourself, Peter? <laughs> <laughs> what a great segue. So tell us your origin story. I'm on. My name's Peter Elliott. I'm president and CEO of the Telcom Insurance Group. As the name might imply, we are owned by a select group of rural telecommunications companies throughout the United States. And our mission is to protect them, protect them from a various number of things. But while we're here at this event, we're specifically speaking about cyber liability, cyber incidents, and working and collaborating with Carrie, her firm, and a couple of others on how we can best protect by working together as a team. And cyber insurance right now is going through some massive changes and, you know, people are reconsidering coverage and things like that. What's your perspective about, about uh, cyber insurance? We are likely to become public enemy number one at this point. Uh, the, the rates seem to be skyrocketing in a, in a lot of different areas. The rural telecom landscape hasn't gone as crazy as the, the generalist market, but Certainly anytime somebody gets a, a price increase, especially when there are a lot of other economic factors impacting them negatively, they're, they're generally not that happy with it. But you know, what we hope is that by all the value added that we, we bring, included working with folks like Wombo Bond uh, and supporting them with legal advice and counsel at, at the insured level, not from us, but from a qualified firm that's experts in their industry, we, you know, we think hopefully we make that experience a little better. Indeed, and, and one of the challenges I would imagine for your organization, because you're a little bit more on the smaller business side compared to the large telecommunications companies, is, is allocating budgets, like you, you said. Um, help our audience understand um, kind of the decision tree, um, the risk reward of getting cyber insurance, for example, well, well, comprehensively, I think between um, working with a team to build your cyber incident response plan, um, getting everyone to buy into that in the company, um, getting the cybersecurity insurance coverage that you need, getting your board in the case of a telephone co-op to um, support what management is trying to do, that that's the first step, setting a budget. Um, and, you know, it depends on the size of the company, but, you know, you, you start out with whatever you can spare and then you start building on that. And then you, you, you watch what's going on in the industry, what's going in your own community in the rural luck industry. And you start saying, like, if I don't do it, this is what's going to happen to me. And Peter can talk more about the costs as far as if you get ransomed or if you have an incident, um, the cleanup costs are well, well 
above what you would pay and doing the preventive, what we call the preventative maintenance or prophylactics that you need to start. So we would say, so I would say we'd start with the board and, and management to get the board to buy into setting this up in your budget and realizing that it's going to continue on. Not It's just not a one time year thing that you do and you probably have to start increasing it, increasing it over time until you've got that level of protection that will counterbalance what uh, an actual attack will cost. And you can speak to that. Yeah, indeed, and, and so you know, what are some of the metrics around that you know, from your experience? Yeah, the, uh, the landscape has changed kind of dramatically. You, you go back 10 years ago, people were just buying their first policies. Mm -hmm. it, it, at that point, it was a liability based only. Nobody was thinking about their own data and, and ransomware and things like mm -hmm. that. And many of them bought limits that were just available. There were a million dollars of what was offered, that's what they took. You know, today, I, I spent a lot of time with Carrie and, and others talking about quantifying, putting real numbers, doing modeling or figuring out some way to, to see the difference between possibility and probability. Anything's possible. I mean, we could be struck by lightning sitting here inside the building. Not likely, <laughs> but possible, versus the probability that we won't. And let's tailor coverage and pricing to things that are probable versus possible. And, you know, to be a little more specific and granular about that very important insight, um, you were talking about ransomware, uh, which is, you know, uh, just uh, rampant now, you know, throughout the United States, across uh, all of CISA's critical infrastructure sectors and things like that. Uh, telecommunications is a prime target. Um, you know, so how do you um, really instill this idea that an ounce of prevention is, is, is better than like a pound of cure? Well, unfortunately for our customers and customers of insurance products, it's usually forced upon them. Um, you, you give them the opportunity to do it themselves on their own where, you, where you, again, you partner with a, a legal firm and you suggest to them that's a, a good thing for them to do. You uh, share with them some things that they might want to do on the technology side and, and if they can't do it themselves, you create partnerships with firms that are capable to help and assist with that. But when they don't do it voluntarily, then you see the industry do what it's doing today, which is saying if you don't have multi-factor authentication, on your email or your network, either you don't have coverage or the coverage you're gonna get really isn't gonna be worth what you're gonna pay for it. Yeah, so it's, it's the force. Well, excuse the interruption. I mean, what, one of the interesting things about that is you have uh, information sharing and analysis center, the ISAC, you have the uh, rural broadband uh, ISAC. Uh, maybe you can help our audience understand uh, kind of this idea that a rising tide lifts all ships, you know, by sharing thread information, sharing experiences uh, is, is good for everyone. Or is that valid? No, no, that is valid, and I think you just you just sold the bill of goods yourself. So mm -hmm. I think the the message here is that at the minimum you should do is join CyberShare if you're one of these rural broadband companies, um, so that you are getting the information and you are starting to understand it, so that you can then go to the board, that you can go to management, and you can say this is what needs to happen. And for I think for an NTCA member, it's three thousand um, dollars annually. I think that's a great deal. Um, and I think it's a great way to get the um, folks within the companies understanding what's going on so that they can then carry that message to their C-level suite and to, to the board. And the board can do what it needs to do because the board ultimately is where the buck stops. I mean, they are responsible from a fiduciary standpoint to the organization um, and to make sure that there's enough coverage, that there's enough work going on in this space to protect the customers that they are elected to serve. And I'm talking about co-ops at this point, but even in a commercial company, you have the same thing. They have boards, they have officers that have these fiduciary responsibilities. So. Indeed. And um, how do people get more information about CyberShare? I think you can go to the NTCA website and or Google CyberShare and you can sign up for it that way. And you um, said it was around three thousand dollars a year. It's three thousand dollars annually for NTCA members. It's also that um, NTCA has extended that to a, another trade association called the Rural Wireless Association. I just happen to be their general counsel, and those members can also take advantage of that for three thousand dollars. And what what benefits do they derive from being part of CyberShare? Um, part of the the it's a weekly updates on what the the. the, um, the information that's coming out of the government um, and the peer sharing information that's um, where others in the CyberShare I, I, ICAS are sharing that information with each other as well. So. Indeed, and so just to, to wrap up, uh, Peter, tell uh, our audience a little bit about um, what you're gonna be doing next to further 
you know, the industry and, and to protect it? A great question and very timely. Being owned by the industry group that we serve, we really focus in on adding value products and services. A lot of companies say they do that, but unfortunately it's usually more in the talking stage than it is in the reality. So, you know, the collaboration that we have with Womble Bond and Cyber ESI was one of the first things that we did and probably one of the best and probably why it's still standing the test of time to say you need legal IT and your insurance provider to be working together providing you with a unified front against all the things that you're going to face with this really, really difficult challenge that's in front of you. But from there, we've also gone in and provided uh, scanning capabilities where we will look at the networks of the telecommunications companies. And it's not as strong and, and wonderful as if you hired your own IT firm to do vulnerability, but it's better than nothing, and we do it free of charge. So we've added that on, and we just recently, this week, launched a program for the telecommunications companies to offer their business customers through their bundled package. So if they're selling their business customer internet uh, live or internet coverage or internet service, for $10 a month, their customer can also get 100,000 of cyber liability insurance. For $15 a month, they can get 250. And you know, when I look at these rural areas, unfortunately, the, the, the flow of, of income there is not great. The, the businesses there that struggle as much as sometimes the telephone companies do. So something as affordable as 10 or $15 a month, bridging a gap that, that the consumers and quite honestly, their neighbors, family and friends in that, in that community need, something we're really proud about launching and, and getting out there. Well, that sounds like a great idea. And how uh, will our audience get more information uh, about what you're doing? Sure, they, they would want to contact me. Our, our website is telcominsgrp.com, and on there they would find my contact information and, and be able to reach out to me. And um, I am always happy to speak to people and, and interact. It's the one fun part of my job, quite honestly. Indeed, I'm sure you're very good at it. And how would they get information from you? Um, well, wombobondickinson.com. No, wampelbondickinson-us.com. <laughs> well, well, for our audience, we'll make sure so you have And maybe a, what you could do is put a little thing We will. <laughs> I, I, a good idea. With um, our contact information. Hey, hey, I do the comedy. I, I think I told you, you, you do the substance. <laughs> Um, so on behalf of a digital universe, thank you so much for who you are and what you're doing and why you're doing. Really appreciate it. And um, keep up the great work. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. And what you're doing is awesome, too. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.